he had been working out in the outfield with Minnie, Rivera, Landis, all these, and had a lot of fun with them. So she said, well, who's he turned it to? And so she said, I'll talk to Bill. So she brings our 12-year-old son to the phone. Who's he traded to? And I said, you traded to San Francisco. I said, well, you know what his answer was? Hot dog. Now I'll get to work out with Willie Mays. <laughs> so, so I figured the trade was okay right then. That, that was it. And the fans out there, of course I had a good year out there, but the fans out there treated me wonderful. Nobody will ever treat me like White Sox fans. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> 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 What's wrong with you? What? My dad was from that era, living there, and uh, I got to meet him accidentally when I was a young kid, and he gave me one of his wool number five jerseys. A uh, best, I still have it to this day. I told him he was my favorite player, and he told me to go jump in a lake. I was uh, Jackie Robinson. Well, I go back further. In 19... Uh, I hate to go back that far. <laughs> 1944, I was picked out of Detroit to go to the uh, boys' all-star game, all-American boys' games in New York. And I was on a radio show with about six other boys. And who did I meet? But Babe Ruth. And I, in and, and my childhood, naturally, Babe Ruth was the greatest thing there ever was. And that was probably one of my biggest thrills, for sure. To me, there was a number nine, Ted William. Ted William. I happened to, I meet him, and he used to go to have fish before I come into the big league, and he used to send me a cigar. I have to wait from Miami to Cuba with some another fish man. He said, give it to number nine to Minoso. You know him? Yeah. So when I get up there, he said, Minoso? I said, what is it? They really send you this batch of cigar. I said, okay, maybe someday I'll be like him. And I'll not be surprised. Later on, we play all star game together. And I had one big picture like that with Mr. Terry William. And I just said, Mr. Terry, rest in peace. It's more of a statement than a question, and I hope I'm speaking on behalf of everybody in this room, but I think both these two gentlemen on the left belong in the Hall of Fame. Thank you. I'll be here in Mexico. Dominica Republica and Pasadena and the whole family. But they don't like it, me in Cooperstown. You know, I, I think Minnie and I think the same way. The Hall of Fame, no question, is the ultimate thing for any ball player, no doubt about it. But being in Chicago here, having statues put up in the outfield and different things like that has meant as much to me because my family, my children, my grandchildren can go out and see the statue anytime they wish. And it is just very big. Do, do me one favor. There's a picture named Whitey Ford as the Hall of Fame, and I think you had quite a record against it, didn't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whitey was pretty good. People always tell me, was Whitey the toughest you ever faced? I said, no, it was those other eight batters. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
I was out there one night and you struck him out three times. <laughs> well, sometimes you have a good night, you know. <laughs> Ted Williams, I will say this one thing. He is the greatest hitter I have ever seen, day in, day out. But one year, a fella that you probably don't remember, he led the league one year later on, Bobby Avila with Cleveland, I swear, I could have rolled the ball up there and he'd have hit a line drive somewhere. <laughs> Everything I threw that year, he hit. I, after Years after that, I got him out a percentage of times. But that year, he was the best hitter I've ever faced. Hi, this is directed to Minnie and Millie. I remember the 59 World Series I was first year at the Cubs. And I'm wondering, are there any players living that you still keep in contact with? I do. I keep in contact with Jimmy Landis, who, uh, who right now has been in the hospital for about a year and a half with a bad back and then a broken hip and just a lot of problems medically. Uh, but I, I talk to him about once every couple of weeks. But uh, he's about the only one, I hate to tell you this, but when we talked to Joanne Fox the other day, Nellie's uh, wife. But, most of our fellows from our 59 team are not around anymore. And uh, we're very fortunate to still be here. But, uh, but uh, we keep in touch with Jimmy Landers quite often. We knew Sherman Lawler, with my uncle. His, 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 wife, his wife just passed away in the last Connie, week. Did? Connie, she yes. Was still writing to my aunt uh, just a few months ago. We got a Christmas card from her and we sent her a Christmas card. I'll tell you what they did, and it's a little different situation, but when Sherm passed away, uh, about two months later, I'm involved in a cancer uh, society, and Connie Lawler sent us $10,000 worth of stock in this one company, and about a month or two later, we got $10,000 again. And that has been a, in a form of a fund, and we've, used it for cancer things ever since. And but she had passed away about uh, two or three weeks ago. No, I'm sorry, young lady. I was not in Chicago in the 59. I was in Cleveland. Well, we had to trade him away one year to win the pennant, you know. <laughs> Thanks to all of our veterans here, and we look forward to seeing everyone.